mother. I know you're talking about. That when she about. stood up, mm-hmm. what she said? Mm-hmm. She broke out with a song and she said this. I woke up this morning with my mind and it was stained on Jesus. Well, I woke up this morning with my mind and it was stained on Jesus. Well, I woke up this morning with my mind. opportunity to serve your holy word to your holy people. Bless those that are listening today, Lord God. Give them, a, give them an abundance of grace, mercy, and peace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our scripture today is going to be taken from the New Testament, Romans chapter 12, verse 2. Romans chapter 12, verse 2. And it reads as follows. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and the perfect will of God. God's holy word, which is already blessed for his holy people. Amen. Today, we're going to put the brakes on mind tricks. Today we're going to put the brakes on mind tricks. Society is full of mind tricks. The world is full of mind tricks. The devil is full of mind tricks. And in my opinion, it's time for mind tricks to retire. Amen, somebody. Now I have a simple question for my listeners today. And the question has a powerful meaning. And perhaps you might have been asked this question by a friend, by a loved one, or maybe even by your supervisor. And I'm going to ask you this question. This question is the title of my sermon. And the title of today's sermon is, What's on your mind? What's on your mind? Amen, somebody. Now, our minds are spiritual. And our bodies are just a temporary overcoat of flesh. And it can't be spiritual. See, that part of us that is spiritual is that part that thinks, feels, loves, and decides how we act. Amen, somebody. Now, do you know you can choose your thoughts? Now, that might seem like a strange thing to say, but... The truth is that people don't realize that they can choose what they think. Amen. And it's important for us to choose our thoughts carefully because our thoughts have a lot to say about our character, our attitude, and our spiritual wellness. Amen. Now, Romans 12, 2 is divinely real. And the Apostle Paul is the author And his message is critically important because it talks about transformation of our mind today. First of all, in his letter, he stresses the importance of a renewed mind, especially in our society. Number two, he addresses the realness and the spiritual power of godliness in the mind transformation. And number three, his message is focused on truth, excellence, and divine godliness. 
His letter discourages total conception of worldly matters. But to focus more on heavenly matters, church, we need to focus more on heavenly matters. Paul was known as the great apostle to the Gentiles. He was also the defender and the advocate for the Christian faith. Now, in his early years, when he was known as Saul, he was known to have a complex personality. Now, as Saul, he opposed Christianity. Now, on his way to Damascus to persecute Christians, he was converted to Christianity by our Lord and Savior, the risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen, somebody. Now, from that point on, Paul was totally zealous for the cause of Christ, and we should be too. You see, all this boils down to God can use anyone for his purpose and, and his mission. Now, transformation is real, and many of us have testimonies to prove that, testim that transformation is real. Amen. You see, our God, through divine transformation, can change the unnatural to the natural, my God in heaven, for his divine purpose. Just that simple. God is able, and he can do the same in your situations. If you're going through some situation, you need a transformation, God can make that unnatural natural. Oh, my God. Now, prayerfully, after this journey today, we will be able to speak truth and listen with our hearts while being connected and serving God. And this is the way that we prove what is good and acceptable and the perfect will of God. Amen, somebody. Just, can I get three amens? I just need three amens from somebody. Romans 12, 2, tell us the way we are to be transformed. Now, pay attention. The way we learn to live Christ's life is by renewing our minds, putting off that old negative, corrupt thinking, and putting on godly thoughts and godly thinking. Amen, somebody. To renew simply means to exchange one thing for another. Exchange the bad for the good. I'll put it like that. Now, if we're not willing to yield and set aside and relinquish our own crazy thoughts, then our lives will never be spiritually transformed. I hope I'm helping somebody today. Now, a renewed mind, church, is one that does two things. First, it has put off sin, put off hurt, put off doubt, put off fear, self-confidence, lust, bitterness, and corrupt thinking. Mm, hallelujah. Next, the second one is put on Christ's mind when you've been transformed. Hallelujah, somebody. Church, when we are renewed, listen to me, we confess, repent, and by giving it all to God, amen, we can then put on the mind of Christ. When we give it all to God and put off all those corrupt things, we can now put on the mind of Christ. Now, I'll ask you the question one more time. What's on your mind? Somebody listening to me. Let me put it to you this way. Spiritual transformation is not a liability. It's a heavenly reward. I hope somebody's listening. A question for you. What were you thinking yesterday in your thinking? Maybe you need more of his word. You see, our destination, church, is not earthly. Our destination is heavenly. I hope somebody's listening. I hope I'm helping somebody. My friend, again, I want to remind you there are three things to have on your mind for spiritual wellness. They are God, self, and others. Jesus had on his mind God, self, and us. Somebody listening, they're going to get it. You see, Paul wants us to know that nothing is too much for you. Nothing is too much for you. God's grace is sufficient, and his strength is made perfect in our weakness. I hope somebody got that. Now, if you choose some H-E-double-L in your life, I want you to be the first. God can knock the H-E-double-L out of your life. If that's what you're going to deal with and you need some help, God can help you. Now, Paul's message of transformation addresses joy. Joy in our life. Listen to this. Joy of suffering for Jesus. 
It's all that in all that we go through, he is our strength and our shield. Tell yourself, the Lord is my shepherd. Number two, joy and serving. Imitating Christ's humility. If my people who are called by my name will just humble themselves and pray, they will hear from heaven and he will forgive their sins and heal their lands. Brothers and sisters, get ready for healing. All this mess is going on, get ready for healing. Joy in believing. Huh? Good God Almighty. Believe always in his holy scripture. Hallelujah. It is our strength both morally and theologically. It alerts us to the correction of our thoughts, our attitudes, hallelujah, and actions. Tell them you're looking at a new creature. Looking at a new creature. And lastly, joy in giving. You see, we have to be fair-minded in our char charity, in our giving. As givers, we are to be true, noble, right, pure, lovely, ad admirable, excellent, and praiseworthy. Hmm. As we imitate Jesus in our lives. You see, Jesus was the ultimate giver. He gave his life so that we can have life, more life, abundantly. My Jesus. Thank you, God. Now, if God is permitting something to be in your life that's difficult, listen to me, trying to help somebody. If God is permitting something to be in your life that's difficult, you can trust that he will give you the strength that you need to handle it. And that's because he never asks us to do anything without giving us the ability to handle it. He's still with us. He left us the comforter. Oh, my God. Now, this is kind of person I want to drop this on you. My son, and I wish God bless his soul that I could have asked him more questions concerning what was on his mind. And one day he came to me and he told me what was on his mind and it blew my mind. He says, Dad, I'm tired of living. And I want to commit suicide. And I went through a mind transformation. And I thank God Almighty in heaven. That I was able to get him some help. Thank you Lord. <sighs> you see the mind is a person's greatest asset. And it is the, the key to peace, happiness, and godliness. However, there are three enemies that will try to attack our mind. That first enemy is Satan, the second enemy is our past, and the third enemy is the world. You see, Satan and his old tricks, same old tricks he pulled on Adam and Eve, misinformation, and then our past. See, at times we think, boy, I'd love to go back, didn't nobody check me, and do some of those things that I enjoy doing. And then the world, trying to impress people in the world. Y'all, y'all pay attention to me now. Now, before we go any further on this journey, I want us to be mindful of some of those mind tricks that the enemy plays on us. Now, I tell you, I was able, I can't tell you how I did it. I was able to get my hands on some of those mind tricks that the devil plays. And I'm going to share them with you because we need to know, oh, 300 person, maybe 200, 100. We go, here, here we go. See, there's five questions, and I got the answers. I got my hands on this playbook. The first question, listen to me carefully. This is what he's going to ask you. Did God really forgive you? Can you believe that? The devil's trying to say, did God really forgive you? See, one of the tricks Satan often used to get you to believe that either God hasn't forgiven you or that he won't forgive you. And the problem with this feeling, when you're feeling like that, is the feeling of forgiveness that God's going to push you away from him. In other words, you might feel that you've been condemned. Well, I told you I got an answer. When he asked you this stupid question, did God really forgive you? Here's the answer. You tell him, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. And that's over there in John 119. You throw that back at him when he asked you that dumb question. Did God really forgive you? Question number two. This is from his playbook. I know he mad because I, I stole it from him. Number two. Number two question. Does God really love you? 
Does, see, he's trying to play that trick. Does God really love you? Now, many times this question rolls around in your head, especially when a major disappointment or tragedy happens in your life. You begin to wonder if God loves, if God's love is real. After all, why is this happening to me? Well, here we go. Hit him with this answer. Hit him with this answer. When he asks you, does God really love you? You tell him, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son in that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Hit him with some of that John 3, 16. Here we go. We almost there. He will ask you this stupid question. Do you really be believe, do you really believe God is going to come through for you? Do you really believe God is going to come through for you? You see, this is a question of God's faithfulness and his ability to take care of you. If Satan can get you to question God's faithfulness, listen to me, this leads to worry, confusion, anxiety, stress, and depression. I'm not going to let you do it to me, you stinky Satan. No. You see, God will be faithful to you. He will not let you down. And you can trust him today, tomorrow, and any time. No matter what the enemy tries to tell you, trust God. Now, here's the answer to that stupid question. When he asks you, do you really believe God is going to come through? Hit him with this. When you pass through the waters, I'll be with you. And when you press, pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, this is some good stuff. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. And the flames will not set you ablaze. That's over there in Isaiah 43 too. Hit him with some scripture. Bang him upside his head. TKO, knock him out. Question number four. We're almost there. This is a stupid question too. No one understands what you're going through. I know y'all heard that before. Whoa, whoa, whoa is me. No one understands what you're going through. You see, this one really isn't a question, but a whisper that will sometimes attack you when you're in a hard place. Hmm. See, the goal is to isolate you. Isolate you from God's presence because he doesn't, he doesn't think you understand. Isolate you from God's people because they don't understand. Devil got some tricks, y'all. Here's the question. Here's the answer to that question. No one understands what you're going through. Hit him with some of this. Ecclesiastic 4.9. Two are better than one because they have a good return for their labor. I think it's three. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. How you like that, Mr. Devil? Stop knocking on my door. Thank you, Jesus. Question number five. This is the last trick I got out of the playbook. Is it really all worth it? He gonna whisper again. Is it really all worth it? Huh. Sometimes in life, you will face discouragement. You will toil, you'll work hard, and you'll give your best. And after all of that, hmm, you may not get really what you wanted. After pouring out your heart and soul into whatever you are doing, good God Almighty, sometimes you could, it makes you feel like you're unappreciated or of little value, or little worth. That's what he's trying to do. When he asks you that stupid question, is it really all worth it? Here's the answer. Over there, this is the answer I'm going to give him out of 2 Corinthians 4, 8, and 9. We are hard-pressed on every side, yet not crushed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Hallelujah, somebody. Struck down, but not destroyed. Get up out of here, you spanky old devil. Hmm. When Satan's attacked, and he will, he will, I want you to gear up. And fight back. And remember, you are more than a conqueror. Yes, you are. And the Holy Spirit who's in you is greater than Satan who's in this world. We're going to get him running. You see, I want everyone to please pay attention to what I'm about to tell you. You have insurance. You got Holy Ghost insurance. Better than Geico. It's better than Progressive. It's better than Nation. Better than Farmers. Better than Liberty. You see... He said, I'm leaving you the comforter. Who is your divine insurance policy? We got a policy from our Heavenly Father. So I'm not afraid of you, Mr. Devil. Now, church, we got to be strong. And in order to be strong and get them Holy Ghost muscles popped up, you got to get on a diet. 
I want, I want to put you on a good diet here. I want you to feed your mind with the truth. People need more than the bread of life. They must be fed on, on the word of God. That's over there in Matthew 4.4. 4. Feed your mind with constructive and not destructive thoughts. You see, those thoughts that are dominated, they, they, they have you sin. Think about some constructive things. Control. And ask the Holy Spirit to help you with your thoughts. My God. Feed your mind the bread of life, which is Jesus Christ. And Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall never hunger. And he who believes in me shall never thirst. I'm going to put you on that diet so you can pump it up. Now check this out. We almost there. This, this journey is, I mean, y'all, I love this journey. If y'all pay attention, I'm going to give you some dessert on this bus. Check this out. Only you can change your mind for you. No one else can do it, but they're going to try. Number two, stop worrying about other people thinking about you. They didn't like Jesus either. huh? Don't allow others to play mind tricks on you. Tricks are for kids. Cocoa Puffs. I don't like them. I, I stopped eating them. Admit to yourself, if you think it's dumb, if you think it's stupid, 99.9% .9 of the time is dumb and is stupid. So stop acting like that. Now, this is good. This is really good. This is like honey. I want you to taste this one. Some individuals that I want to ask the question, what's on your mind? I definitely, when I get a chance, I want to ask Adam and Eve, what was on your mind? What were you thinking about? Huh? The woman with the issue of blood, I know what she was thinking about. What was on her mind? She, when she touched Jesus' garment, she was thinking about peace, happiness, and love. The Virgin Mary, when the angel approached her and told her that you're going to have a baby, what was on her mind? She was saying, a baby? A virgin? And when it sank in, she says, I'm going to have a baby that can walk on water. I'm going to have a baby that can heal the blind. I'm going to have a baby that can save the world. Hey! Virgin Mary, girl, you had some stuff on your mind. Uh, Pharaoh, Pharaoh of Egypt, when Moses told him, God said, let my people go. What was on his mind? He thought God was a joke. God don't joke around, y'all. The little boy who gave his lunch to Jesus to feed them all. Huh? What was on his mind? I'm, I'm thinking he was saying, my people who are called by my name will be fed. Hallelujah. Now this one, I want you to listen to this one. Because I think this one, this one may be heavy. After this one, we'll move on. What was on Lazarus' mind when Jesus called him from the dead? Well, Jesus called me back from the dead 30 years ago. When I almost OD'd on crack cocaine. What was on my mind? That I'm going to leave this alone. Huh. Well, church, we almost at the end of this journey. Now, if you don't mind, I want to pull back the curtains and show you some real freaky mind stuff in 2021. <laughs> Y'all ready? Here we go. Mr. Trump, you lost the election, brother. What's on your mind, dummy? On January the 6th, 2021, I'm talking to the haters who marched on the Capitol. What was on your mind? You're going to jail. Huh? Hey, want to be gangsters? Now, this one is serious. Get rid of those guns. Is it stop killing our children. Stop killing the family members. Get rid of the guns. This one may be heavy for you. I'm not trying to offend anybody. What's on your mind? You don't want to get vaccinated. What's on your mind? You don't want to wear a mask. What's on your mind? You have not accepted Christ Jesus as your Lord and Savior. What's on your mind? Now, Paul said it loud and clear because I'm coming down the highway. I'm just about a couple, three blocks from the station. Y'all can unbuckle.
Paul said it loud and clear. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is good and acceptable and the perfect will of God. That's what we're talking about, transformation. Be ye transformed is a command. It's not a suggestion. And Paul wants us to know we must not allow ourselves to be conformed to this world. And we are not to masquerade as worldly people. Don't become a victim of the world. Huh? The world is an instrument of Satan. Huh? And his ungodly influences on your life. You see, being transformed can only be accomplished huh, by the help of the Holy Spirit working in us and being filled with his spirit. We're almost there. Renewed minds bring about renewed living for God. By receiving and accepting Jesus Christ in our life, it not only demonstrates, but it guarantees that we've been transformed. Spiritually transformed. Good God, this thing did so good. I'm going to put some peanut butter and jelly on it. Huh? Church. This was a wonderful journey today. And I thank you for traveling with a brother. Now the big question still I want you to ask yourself, what's on your mind? Father in heaven, we are in a mind debate daily. Huh? Give us desire and strength and courage to do the right thing by transforming our minds and allowing your will to be done in our life, not the world's will to be done in our life. Creating us a clean heart. Clean mind, clean spirit, clean attitudes of gratitude. Ha! Huh? Bless and give us spiritual courage so that we can get our minds transformed. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Shalom. Thanks for traveling with a brother. What's on your mind? I know you're talking about. What she mm -hmm. said. She broke out with a song and she said this. I woke up this morning with my mind, and it was stained on Jesus. Well, I woke up this morning with my mind, and it was stained on Jesus. Well, I woke up this morning with my mind.